Thank you very much indeed, Daz. Now, writer and broadcaster Emma Wolfe and the columnist for The Times, Hugo Rifkin, are here with a look through the morning's papers in just a tick. But let's kick off with some breaking news. A proposal is being reported as, as to swap Israeli hostages for Palestinian prisoners has been sent to Hamas... Uh, after Paris talks. This is what Joe Biden alluded to overnight. People are saying that a ceasefire is gathering pace and could happen, according to Joe Biden, with his ice cream, by March the 4th. I know you're here to review the papers. Emma, just your response to that quickly, if you can. I think that sounds like uh, things are finally, you know, people are talking and it sounds like there is progress being made. That's a good thing. That has to be a good thing. For you the can't... humanitarian cause and, and what's happening, it's a good thing. Do you think it's the answer there? I wouldn't bet that it actually happens. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, good, it's good that they're getting close. Personally, I think now is about the time for a ceasefire, certainly. But uh, Israel is not keen on a ceasefire until it's achieved its aims. And really has, I mean, if, if they doubt the sincerity of Hamas in returning hostages, uh, they might very well not, um, not be as up for this as people hope they are. Mm. Should we just have a quick listen to, yeah. to what Joe Biden yeah. had to say? Well, I hope by the, the beginning of the weekend, I mean, the end of the weekend, at least my, my, my national security advisor tells me that we're close. We're close. We're not done yet. And my hope is by next Monday, we'll have a ceasefire. I, I know I get accused of many things, and you're in charge. The leader of the free world talking about a potential breakthrough, one of the most horrific things that's going on in the world right now, is pictured looking like he's on an old people's day out at an ice cream parlor. Yeah, the ice Can we be honest? No. Honest to God, I can't... I don't understand it. Yeah, it's not about him being the leader of the free world. It's the fact that he's discussing, you know, the Hamas yeah. attacks, the atrocities, the likelihood of a ceasefire, he... holding an ice cream. What's he... he supposed to say? I can't talk about this now, I'm holding an ice Could cream. Could he not no, put but it Hugo, down? The, guy <laughs> is, the, put it the point down. I'm making is yeah. he's yeah. ridiculed yeah. for his age. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you playing it again? <laughs> Good God. You know, yeah. it, it's it, it just to me, it's such a serious subject. Do you He's know got what I mean? A million aides think... around him. He could have gone, take that. Yeah. Hold my beer. Well, tr truthfully, look, everyone's got an ice cream. Yeah. Why, <laughs> why, why have we no ice cream? Asked, asked the question yeah. in an awkward moment. Um, we'll get on to actually his words and what that <clears> proposal <throat> looks like and uh, how credible a plan it might be uh, in about half an hour's time. We're going to go uh, live to a reporter in Israel. For now, should we look at some of the news dominating the yeah. headlines here? We've been talking about this already, uh, Hugo. Front page of the Mail, MPs, this is the Home Affairs Committee, who said Gaza protests leave police less able to stop <clears> crime. <throat> They're talking about how much it's cost, not just in sort of time and money, but police resource as well. I'm sorry, I refuse to talk about this unless you give me an ice cream. Um, no, look, <laughs> Can you is... get him an ice cream? Can I just say, before you make yeah. demands, your father was on our show last week. And Did you he give said, him an ice cream? I wanted... Well, he, need, he had more than ice cream. And I said, I wanted you and him together. And he said, that lazy boy doesn't work on a Thursday. So I do a show on Saturdays. On <laughs> radio, so Malcolm Rifkin works <laughs> seven days a week. Maybe you could learn from him. Crack as, on. As if. Um, <laughs> look, Gaza protests, they are costing a huge amount of money. They've cost about £19 million so far, it says in various papers today. They are, of course, placing a strain on other forms of policing. Problem here being, people are allowed to protest. People mm. must be allowed to protest. They're allowed to protest even if you don't like what they're protesting about. Mm -hmm. These are not riots. These are not, these are not uh, marches in which the city that they take place in get trashed. They are not... They, relative to protests generally, they are not particularly violent. There's a lot of things that are said in them that people object to. Protest is supposed to be a hassle. Protest is supposed to upset people. Otherwise, it's not doing its job. So I think, I mean, this is a real problem. It is a problem they've run for so long, every weekend, really, for months. But, but we're, this is a free society. People I, get, I don't think we should ever, Emma, and Hugo's right, ever doubt the right to protest. Of um, it, it's the sort of deliberate, disruptive tactics and what it's doing yeah. to... And, and my point is this, which isn't going to be very popular. All I see are pictures of the police standing there with their arms crossed, doing absolutely nothing, which is, in fact, ironic, because most people would say that if your house gets burgled, the police don't turn up anyway. So we're straining a force that's not really providing for people who live in this country. I'm not saying you shouldn't protest, but but why aren't the police being a bit more... I don't know, what's the right word? But what, if they're uh, not breaking the law, what can the police do? Well, there are some instances in which they are breaking the law. For example, it is a, a, an offence to project things onto the Elizabeth Tower. It was allowed to have, from the river to the sea, project onto the Elizabeth Tower. I... There are instances, and they knew where it was coming from, Rosie. They could see the projector where it was being projected on. For example, that kind of thing. That is. Can illegal. I say this to Charlotte Church and anybody who and that thinks was that they're right? Calling yesterday. Yeah, I'm going to say that this right. Absolutely... Charlotte Church sang from the river to the sea. For all the people that are going to jump up and down, Children. I'm going to read right. And I have every right to do this. If you don't like it, shove it. 
From the river to the sea is a call for a Palestinian state extending from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. Jewish people says that it's calling for the annihilation of the Jewish state of Israel. OK? It was used by Hamas, this is really important, in 2017 in its charter, which called for the removal or the extermination of the Jewish population. And the British police allowed that to be put on Big Ben and did absolutely nothing. And That's the problem, Hugo. That's not good enough. Look, I mean, that, that is a pretty... I mean, we can, we can say that they're, they're stretching their resources and we should say they should be doing more. It's hard to say both those things at once. I mean, yes, I think there are... The police certainly could be doing more in terms of cracking down on slogans. Yeah. Bear in mind, we are talking about slogans and yeah. banners. We're, again, we're not talking about violence. We're not talking about disorder. We're talking about slogans and banners. They could be doing more to crack down on that. I don't think that would solve the problem of having these huge marches every weekend. And if you clamp down on the, on the marches, you then create another problem, which is a debate about the yeah. right to protest, which potentially Precisely. inflames things further. Yes. Yeah, well, and there's a line between the right to protest peacefully or the right to state your view and, and when it blurs into the right to offend and to intimidate others and to make them feel unwelcome in their own city. And we know the rise of anti-Semitism. There was a very interesting report over the weekend saying actually the policing protests are costing up to 30 million. That's what the Met Police have been say talking about. The fact that they've also had Just Stop Oil protests, which is a significant drain on their resources. The equipment, the policing, the, the, the time, the, they call it abstraction and absence. Just the, the fact that the workforce are here, not there. Mm. And as you say, they're not, they're not solving L crime anyway. Love to hear what you think, my friends. Are stricter rules needed to help police manage protests They've in this country. They've got the rules. They've got the laws. They don't need more. They need to enforce them. I Harry. agree. Listen, I'm asking the people. Talk today at talk.tv. Text to 8732. Um, the other big news story that doesn't go away is Lee Anderson, of course. I think we all agree that what Lee Anderson said over the weekend, I said this yesterday with my tin helmet on, the words weren't chosen correctly at all. No. However... I However, said that 10 years ago, if you mentioned the word immigration, you were called a racist. I believe there is a debate to be had about the sentiment behind what he said. Yesterday, he spoke again, didn't he, Rosie? Yes. It was a little bit more... He admitted the first thing was a bit clumsy. Now the Red Wall Tories are saying, get him back. Actually, he speaks for a lot of people, your view? And he does. He does actually speak. What he said resonated with a lot of people. He came out yesterday, he issued a, no, a non-apology, and it wasn't an apology, and he said, I'm not going to say sorry. Mm. But he did say it was a clarification, explanation of the context. He feels incredibly frustrated at what is happening to our capital city. He said that his words were clumsy, and I think we can all agree on that, because yep. we know Sadiq Khan is not in hoc to Islamists. No. He's not, they're not his mates. So that was actually wrong. But, yeah, there's been this upswell of support, apparently, amongst Red Wall Tories, sort of rallying around the firebrand Lee, who's actually a lovely man, by the way, and an excellent constituency MP, just to say that. He's also done a proper job. He was a coal miner for 10 years. He was a Labour councillor until he defected to the Tories. So, as a person, he's very nice. I know him. I like him. He goes... He cares about his constituents. He goes to see them in hospices. He does things that many, many, many MPs don't bother to do. So that's just an aside. But, yeah, apparently there's a big upswell. People saying, Lee, bring Lee back. He does resonate. He really, you know, he touches... Uh, for many people that voted for the first Tory for the first time in 2019, he really appeals. He's very popular with them. Will he defect to reform? That would be hugely popular for reform because lots of Tories would follow him. So we'll see. The, the, apparently around the whip, the chief whip is saying, no, 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 that's not true, but a lots of Tory MPs are very frustrated and have, been, and have been lobbying the whip's office and saying, you know, bring him back. Oh, do you think that's going to happen, Hugo? No. It, look, it's nice to hear he's a good constituency MP. Maybe he could spend more time there because he doesn't know much about London. He said these marches were Islamists. They're not. He said Sadiq Khan was friends with Islamists. He's not. He used the words Islamists generally to sort of bundle together mm. the idea of protest. And Very Sadiq clumsy, Khan, wasn't it? It wasn't clumsy. It was deliberate. He did it because he wanted to... He wanted to associate Sadiq Khan with these protests because Sadiq Khan is a Muslim man. That is what he wanted to do. That's what he did. It is not within Sadiq's power to shut down these protests. It has been I the thought he was in charge of the police, though. He's in charge of the police, but if... The, if, the, if so, if they're it... impotent and doing nothing and allowing that to be... Just hear if... me out one second. Yeah. If they're allowing that, cos they know where the projector is, to be shone on Big Ben, Hugo, why don't the police under Sadiq Khan's control take that down? The police need to operate within within the boundaries of the law. If the, if, if the police are to be instructed to police differently, that comes from the Home Secretary. OK, OK, brilliant. Let's move on. Uh, Hugo, this is... Um, Hugh, this is the Telegraph...
Sunak's raid on workers <clears throat> and businesses will likely cost the country an extra 100 billion in taxes by the end of the decade as rising net migration piles more pressure on public services. Tell me more. You know, I'd like to. I've tried very hard. <laughs> I can't really make head or tail of this story, particularly yeah. because it's reported quite differently in all the other newspapers. What we do know is happening is that the tax burden is rising enormously. Mm -hmm. uh, the IFS is worried about this, but is also worried about if we have tax cuts, how we're going to pay for them. Precisely how this links into rising immigration, except for on the front page of The Telegraph, I must admit I'm somewhat in the dark, despite having read these stories, these <laughs> stories several times. Basically, we had a, the, the, the country's uh, finances are in the doldrums, are a real, real mess. We need to raise mon more money. This places a burden upon all of us. Uh, and rising migration means that spending will go less far because there are more people. However, we'll also be bringing in more money, right? So, I mean, I think if, the, if there's a villain here, it's the person who wrote the headline <laughs> wrote the in the headline. Telegraph. You've done an excellent sense of the story. job of explaining yeah. that. Yeah, yeah and we, I yeah. also read it a few times and then turned it around yeah. and tried to make sense of it that way. And that so we'll just sense. leave it there. Great <laughs> job, Hugh. Tried to, but I think this tried is to all... step into it like yeah. a map. Yeah. Yeah. No. And then I had yeah. a coffee and that didn't work. I think it's all in the lead up to the to the big to the spring budget. There's going to be a lot of this stuff swirling around. Who's going to do what? What's he going to do? Well, let's see. Mm. Uh, can we finish in a slightly <laughs> light-hearted way as we've done everything that's quite serious? Emma, this is a story in my least favourite newspaper in the world, the Daily Star. It really yuck. What, what what is really it? I know. Okay. I, I have no idea. So, so you're not. It's well, sing for your supper is the headline. Right. Right. We're used to being told to sing for our supper, but actually, apparently, we should sing to our supper. So, so food, when you've got so your food, food ready, start crooning. I know Jeremy will. Sorry, you're it. singing to your supper. Yeah, sing Why is that? To, to make it feel happy and then to, to oh. give you healthy. Uh, we should, and also we should eat our pudding before we eat our dinner because you should eat your. <laughs> okay. Why? The reason that you should sing to. to your supper is so that you can live joyfully. Um, you need you to compare see? the effects of music and words on water molecules. I know, I told you it was very woo-woo. Rosie, this is absolutely <laughs> up your street. You're going to sing no, to your... No, it's not. But you sing. It's not that you sing to your supper. Liking singing has nothing to do with believing that singing to my food would have any impact on... Charles, it. talk to trees. Let's absolutely. cut to Listen, the chase. Soothing, yeah, Rosie. Wor soothing words <laughs> and music create snowflake-like structures within your food. Are you supposed to sing while eating your supper? Because that sounds messy. Yes, it so does. So going back to Christmas, and Hugo, just before Christmas, delivered the yeah. greatest line ever. And he said, no, no, goose for me on Christmas yeah, Day, boy. Yeah. Imagine that Christmas Day. Apparently you're supposed to have your, your Christmas pudding and your brandy butter before you had your goose, dear boy. What, what's this pudding Because before? the body digests sweet stuff first. I mean, to be fair, I've normally eaten a sort of chocolate orange and sort of yeah. Yeah, drunk, that's drunk that's a bottle of Baileys before I have the goose, so I'm not <laughs> saying that's different. That's pretty pretty yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> also, the other thing is, yeah. aren't you supposed to have, if you, if you really switched on with done. Aren't you supposed to have your biggest meal? I know people, you know, the, the, aren't these people who have, like, Bre steak and chips for breakfast? Yeah, and breakfast they like the a king, lunch a like a prince and supper like a pauper. I think that's totally wrong. I definitely think you should have a big meal in the evening. Definitely have a big meal in the evening and finish off with a bit of Christmas pudding. Absolutely. Brandy <laughs> sauce. <laughs> and a Terry's chocolate Thank lunch. Thank you yes. both very much. <laughs> Emma Hugo will be back with us uh, in just under an hour.